So we're going to be tasting a flight of coffees here at Fonte Cafe. Okay. The format that we're going to employ is the use of three small French presses each with a different coffee in it. And we've chosen the French press method because it's a relatively transparent method for brewing coffee. Not a lot to interrupt our experience of the coffee in terms of a filtration or any kind of additives like cream or sugar or anything crazy like that. Uh, this particular flight of coffee is going to feature three coffees that have been processed in three different ways. And when we're talking about processing, it's a matter of after the coffee cherry's been picked from the tree, what happens after that? Okay. And what happens after that has a significant influence on what we'll see in the cup. So in terms of inherent coffee flavor, big contributors, of course, soil conditions, climate conditions, altitude, all that's really important. But something that people don't often think of because it's not superficially apparent is how has the coffee been treated after it's been harvested. So we have one example of a coffee that's fully washed. We have a semi-pulp coffee or pulp natural and then we have a dry process coffee. Uh, and which is which? So Thank you, you so Brazil. much for jumping in there, Ed. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, we've got a Brazil Monte Alegre that's going to be our semi pulp coffee. Okay. We have a very unusual coffee from Sulawesi, which is, of course, one of the islands in Indonesia. It's Sulawesi Toraco, and it is a fully washed Sulawesi coffee. And then down at the end, we have Ethiopian Hise, which is a very special, special dry process coffee. Uh, in terms of the processing, as you know, the coffee tree produces what looks for all the world like a cherry. Mm -hmm. And inside the cherry is the seed, which is a pair of seeds that face each other. They each have a flat side and a round side. So if you're familiar with what a coffee bean looks like, mm -hmm. most of them have the flat side and the round side. You can, after picking the cherries, immediately strip the fruit off. You can strip part of the fruit off, or you can leave the fruit on. Uh, this is a little broad brush, a little bit simplified, but fundamentally what we're talking about is how much flavor is going to be imparted to that seed from the surrounding fruit mm -hmm. after it's been taken from the tree. So to ripen it, basically. Exactly. Uh, so in the case of the Sulawesi, the fruit was completely removed within hours of having been picked. With the Brazil, the pulp natural, a portion of the fruit was removed, but part of the fruit was allowed to stay on the seed, some of the inner parts of the fruit, uh, and it dried there and imparted some of its fruit flavor to the seed. And then the dry process coffee, the Ethiopia on the end here, the fruit was allowed to dry fully on the seed before it was removed from the seed. Uh, we'll start with the fully washed, the Sulawesi. Washed coffees are typical of Central America, many places in Latin America, many places in Eastern Africa, particularly the more central and southern parts of Eastern Africa. Uh, but they're not typical of Indonesia. Indonesia does a lot of dry process coffee. So this is a very unusual coffee and gives us a good look at what does processing add to the flavor profile. Uh, we're accustomed to Sulawesi's that have lots of kind of herbal, swampy, sometimes green tea-like character to them. Uh, particularly in the aromas, and also very heavy, thick-bodied coffees. Uh, those are typical dry process Sulawesi coffees. So let's take a look at this washed Sulawesi, and hopefully it will inform us a little bit about washed coffees and a little bit about Sulawesi coffees. The flights are fabulous in as much as it gives you the opportunity to compare different coffees at the same time. So often people come in to do uh, coffee cupping and what they really walk away with if they're very much coffee novices is, wow, they really do taste different. Mm -hmm. You're at such a disadvantage if you have a cup here and then you have a cup of a different coffee, but it's the next day. Uh, it doesn't allow you the kind of comparison that the flight does. So in terms of exploring what differences there might be between coffees from different origins, doing a flight like this is a great thing. Uh, you can't taste coffee and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's taste a little bit. Okay. Any tips for all your... We're informal here. Okay. Uh, if you spit, make it on the floor. <laughs> nice. Now, washed coffee 
Chinese are known for having a nice clean finish to them. And we've got a little bit of that dry quality, that little mm -hmm. sort of quality. I always think of it as, as running your finger off a recently cleaned window or a long mm -hmm. recently cleaned window. It's got that squeaky clean kind of thing going on. And we're left a little bit with that. Uh, we still have some nice thick body, particularly in the savor of the coffee. When we've got the coffee in our mouth uh, for a little while and are savoring it, uh, you can really feel the weight of the coffee there. This coffee for me, I always think of those, uh, you know those oranges that you get at Christmas that aren't oranges, they're chocolate? Oh, yeah. And you go bang like that and all the segments fall out. Uh, it reminds me of that, that is it has nice milk chocolate notes in the finish. And the quality of the acidity is a little bit tinged with not only citrus, but specifically with an orange citrus quality. And I think that's really the outstanding characteristic of this cup for me. Uh, initially, we're getting some nice kind of jasmine types of aromas. Let's check those out at the very beginning. Just a little bit floral. I guess you can't talk in cup at the same time. Uh, and then up comes that acidity, that citrusy quality, and then that is overlaid by the milk chocolate notes in the finish that give you that, that candied sort of finish. At the same time, very, very clean finish. No roughness to it, very smooth. Uh, these are things that you wouldn't necessarily associate with a real classic Sulawesi. Uh, so one of the reasons that we're featuring it is because it is unusual and because it does give you a look at arguably a cleaner version of the inherent qualities of the coffee.